What's up team? Glad to have you here on this fine day. We are going to be talking about some face palettes. Things that, um, at least judging by their launch time, I'm going to call holiday face palettes. So they contain various steps. Some might be more what you call a blush palette, some more of a combo multitasking palette, but none contain technically eyeshadows, although you could use some of these things as eyeshadows. But they're about the face and I've been using them here and there, um, some of them on and off for what seems like a couple months now. Um, trying to wrap my head around what I think of them. Some I really don't like so well, some I would highly recommend. But a lot of times we're basing our decisions off of comparisons with other things. So sometimes I think it's even more valuable if you can chunk things together in a video like this and really offer those comparisons as opposed to a single product review. So in an effort to lay it all out here for you, I'm going to be talking about two, four, six, seven, eight palettes. The first two I'll mention are actually two that I've already reviewed in detail here on my channel, and I'm talking about these two from Clinique. So I'll go ahead and link to the video below where I give more details, but one is called the Get Cheeky Palette, and it contains three of the Cheek Pop blushes, and then I've also got the All Aglow Palette. This one came from Sephora, by the way. Um, the All Aglow I got from Ulta, and it's a decent little four-piece palette here with generously sized face colors for just, you know, a mattifying translucent powder, highlight, blush, and bronzer. Words to describe these palettes. Um, usable, nice, decent, um, but they're things that don't particularly wow me. The reason being for this Get Cheeky palette is that two of the three shades work for me as blushes. That would be these two here. It's a really nice formula overall, and I kind of felt satisfied having gotten this palette because I was like, oh, I had almost forgotten about how good this Cheek Pop formula was, but this really wasn't much of a blush for me, and I was just overall like, it's good, but not great. And then in the All Aglow palette, another situation where I love the blush, I thought it was really useful to actually have have this mattifying powder in here in the mix of these face colors because then that really covers it. Kind of like my Needs palette. I feel like, you know, the fact that there was a matte powder in there along with your contour bronzer, highlight, and blush, it made things really well rounded. So I do appreciate that it's in here, but the shimmer powder is really super subtle. The bronzer, I would have loved if that was a little deeper as well. So I don't see this catering really to a lot of different um, preferences or skin tones frankly. It's a great berry kind of blush that would go for a lot of people, but your bronzer and highlight really don't offer a lot of intensity. So there's another instance where it's good but not great for me. Let's talk about another product that's in that basic category, this Sephora Moon Phases palette. I think I mentioned a while back that I had this palette and I like the idea of a Moon Phases palette. And at a glance it really is cool. You've got like your full moon, you know, just it full pan um, colors here, like highlighters right in the middle. Um, you got your crescents and your half moons here on the side. And for variety's sake, I think this is cool. Um, if you like a subtle glow out of your highlights, I think you might enjoy them as well, because that is basically what they offer. They're swatched on these three fingers. They don't really big time distinguish themselves from one another. They're just like softly pearlescent. And I do find some of these colors to be a little unique, like this really rich terracotta down here. I like the mauve neutralness of some of these, even a purpley tone shade. What I found frustrated me a little bit was the fact that you were getting these slivers of shimmer here on the sides of some of these. And I don't know, I don't love things that are in palettes just for show. Even this little design, while it was cutesy, and yes, it did kind of draw me in to make the purchase, ultimately Ultimately, upon using it, it's like, well, why is that there? It's just that little bit of shimmer, and it's kind of hard to evenly incorporate it on my brush. And the blushes are really pigmented, so you don't want to go doing a full-on swirl to blend that shimmer into the rest of it. So it's another one of these, it's just okay for me, dog. You know, I can find things that I like about it, but knowing what I know now about the product, I wouldn't go, like, repurchasing it. Also, I don't like the flimsy, um, not solid plastic here on the lid. That is very bendable, and if you wanted to travel with this, it'll bend down and actually hit the pans of product, so it's not very well protected. Then we got our two lovely hourglass palettes here. Whew. These are $80 each, my friends, and I will say I've used in the past, like, two years, um, I've gotten the holiday release from hourglass. I remember when one had kind of like a matte, marbly finish, and then there was a good one last year as well. And I found myself reaching for those palettes a lot, like actually getting good continued use out of them, because they do offer a kind of well-rounded scope of things for the face 
face. Not just your blushes, but a little bit of a highlight, and then some powders that can work as sort of all over setting powders, and maybe a bronzer. And if you're a big fan of Hourglass products, you like to collect them, you enjoy getting that little different sampling of products that they make every year. This one's called the Unlocked, and this one is the Ambient Edit Volume 4. While I love this tone of the exterior, this is actually the palette that I prefer, and I believe this is sold out on Sephora, but I just recently did see it on Beautylish. This is what's going on on the inside, and the reasons why I like this palette, first off, I like both blush shades. Even though this one looks light, um, that peach really does translate on my skin. I enjoy it. I like the soft shimmer in it. I like the satiny finish of this sort of, um, I don't know, what would you call that? Berry plum. This bronzer up here called Golden Bronze Light, I feel that actually shows up well on my skin and is an effective bronzer. And the highlight as well. A very profound highlight that I feel feel like a person could wear lightly if they wanted to, but you could really get a statement from that as well. And that is called the Metallic Strobe Powder in Champagne Strobe Light. The blushes, by the way, are Nude Glow and Mood Flush. And then we got a couple powders up here, and these are the finishing powders in Soft Light and Filtered Light. And I feel like Hourglass's ambient powders, I mean, they just have this very, very subtle effect on the skin. Like, they can kind of mattify, they can kind of diminish the look of pores a little bit, but not in a dull mattified way. You know what I'm saying? It takes away the bad shine, leaves a little good sheen. And you have a couple of tones there. One that I might use all over the face, one that I might target a little bit more if I really felt like I needed to use it to set something. I could even like pop that on the under eye area. But I found this to be a good well-rounded palette and I liked everything in it. Um, is it worth the $80? I struggle to actually admit that yes, it's worth the 80 bucks. To some people, if you're a big avid collector of Hourglass and you really generally love all their things. I don't think you'd be disappointed in the quality of this one, but overall there are other things out there that can multitask, and if you're really trying to watch what you spend, I think you can certainly pull together some other great affordable products that could give you the similar look to this, you know? So you see why I kind of teeter on that. I think it's really good. I'm not sure that it's totally worth the money, but I was not a big fan of this um, Ambient Edit 4, and here's why. I didn't feel like the bronzer hardly showed up on me. I felt like the highlight as well right above it didn't show up much either. By the way, this is the strobe powder in Euphoric Strobe Light. The bronzer is the filtered bronze light. You're getting two finishing powders up here, dim light and diffused light, which I don't really have a problem with those. And I also kind of like this blush down here in the corner. This is called the strobe blush in Euphoric Fusion. And then we also have another one in Luminous Glow Strobe Blush. I would have liked a little more blushy intensity out of this, but it's about half the palette that I kind of feel like, okay, I'm digging this. And the other half of it that I feel like not enough showing up on my skin. And my goodness, if it doesn't show up on me, how is anybody with tan or rich skin going to feel about this? So the Unlocked palette for me is the easy pick out of the two, but still, I think the cost is pretty high. So now I do want to mention something that is kind of a four-way multitasker that is one of my favorites. I don't know that it's officially holiday. I've enjoyed it for months now. It's the Too Faced Sugar Peach Wet and Dry palette here. So um, this, when you open it up, you really smell the peach. It totally follows that peach theme from Too Faced, but I love what's in here. I love the intensity of this highlight. I love this uh, peach honey shade, which I use as a bronzer. It's got some shimmer. If you're anti-shimmer, you may just want to overlook this one entirely because everything's got it. You got this blush up here that appears to have a fine golden sparkle. It's called Sugar Peach, but that doesn't really show up a lot on the skin. I feel I get more glow from this peach pop blush because it's got that real goldeny shift to it, but it's so pretty. It's such a radiant palette. When I use this, I just feel like I am totally glowing. Today I'm only wearing the peach honey shade because I've got something else to show, but this peach pearl highlight is outstanding, wet or dry. And by wet, I mean take a dampen beauty blender, dab into it. Tiffany D showed me this for the first time, and that was when I became really energized about this thing. Took my beauty blender in, dabbed it across the cheeks. It was just like... Yes, this is this is the pinnacle of highlighting, I think. Um, and so many of you have gotten this and said, yes, I love it too. Um, one thing to be aware of, this is not super deep and dark. It's got a nice richness to it, but I don't know that the deepest skin tones would find it like a really satisfying bronzer. And again, everything in here has some glow, but I have been so um, surprisingly satisfied by the look and the radiance that this palette turns out on my face and the fact that I'm getting my bronzer step in there, a couple blushes 
to choose from. A highlight as well. I've used all this on my eyes too. I guess I need to link to the video where I talked about that some more, but um, I love this thing. So if we're getting down to, Emily, what do you actually like in this video? This is definitely a winner for a multitasking palette. Now, as far as just straight up blush palettes go, or maybe technically blush and highlight, I have another one that I really, really like, and it's from Lorac, and it's their Shine Bright um, Color Source and Light Source Cheek Palette. Um, they've got an eye palette too that I'm still kind of playing with a bit, but this is what's in the cheek palette. And everything is very, very pigmented. Um, you've got to use that same kind of Lorac caution that you might use as you dip a brush into their eyeshadows and you don't want to create too much powder kick up. You're going to see some powder kick up, particularly with Blossom. But I love these understated kind of X Factor neutral shades up here. Um, Aura and T Rose, those are so beautiful. You're going to look at them in the palette and be like, eh, dull, no, not really speaking to me. Like, I can see why you like Technicolor, but what's with those shades up there? But they give this beautiful soft flush, like I'm wearing Aura as my cheek color right now, and I'm wearing Bold Spirit here as my highlight. And you might look at it in the pan, and alongside Opalescent, you think, well, that's a deep highlight. No, this is really shiny and just super reflective. And then you also have this more kind of buttery type highlight shade. They're both really soft, very smooth. Here's the way I feel about it. You got two like Becca caliber highlights within a really good blush palette of four matte blushes. So you've got the power to customize that glow that you get. If you want to keep it real minimal, barely tap into a highlight, you can do that. If you want to turn any of these blushes into a really nice glow on the whole apple of your cheek, just dab into the blush, dab into a highlight, and just start swirling it on. But there's amazing pigment. This is a beautiful little cheek pop here. In fact, I'll add some of that for you right now, just to show a little bit of Technicolor here, because this is just life. Put that on the apple of the cheek, and it's like, okay, I'm feeling good today. So I love that pop, but I really like the muted subtleties of these other shades as well because they are so pigmented and it's a little hard to put your finger on how great they are until you just start working them into a look. But for me, I do see Blossom as something that can kind of pair in with T Rose or pair in with Technicolor and almost soften or airbrush the look of your blush a little bit more when you just dip into this alongside either of those. Just a thought, but I really enjoy this as a blush highlight palette. It doesn't have the bronzer, so it does lose a little multitasking for me that this peach palette has, but for blush highlight, I think it's really good. Here's another one that I have enjoyed, um, not quite as much as the Lorac, but I still, I think it's nice. It's from NARS. The packaging is out of control with this collection, but this is called the Hot Trist Cheek Palette, and it's got these different kind of like textured seeming, you know, as you look at them in the pans, blushes and highlights. Uh, basically look at it as two intense blushes, two softer blushes, and two highlights here. And I really like the way they come off on the cheeks, particularly these shades, and my top favorite being this rosy color down here. It's rosy with just like a little tiny golden shift. And it's kind of funny because you do dip into these and they're an unusual texture. You're not going to kick up fallout. Like it's a polar opposite texture wise of Laurent rock, but yet they still manage to be pigmented. This blush up here has quite a bit of sheen to it. Everything else I'd say is kind of a subtle satin finish, and then two pretty pronounced highlights on either side of my middle finger there. So the boldness is here. Everything's going to have at least a little bit of a glow. Like I said, I think kind of satiny finishes right in here with these, but I like it. I think it would be an impressive gift. Just the packaging of it is really like, wow. It's a real statement type thing, and I would say what sets it apart maybe from the Lorac palette is the blushes are a little bit more pronounced color wise here like you're getting a really strong like pinky berry shade and a rich rosy color your soft pink and then your corally peach and it's very identifiable they're a little more colorful but if you like your more muted neutral blushes you've got three amazing options in here plus a little bit more of a pop which I think is almost necessary but the highlights in both are really nice so this is my like like pile in this video the Lorac the NARS and the Too Faced sugar peach. I do enjoy the Hourglass Unlocked, but you see why I think that's kind of a big splurge for $80. The Ambient Lighting Edit Volume 4 might be my like bottom of the pile product here, the thing I like the least, and then these falling somewhere in the middle, my two Cliniques and the Sephora. So guys, I hope this was helpful as you're thinking about your holiday shopping, and you know, I've talked about a lot of eye palettes, but really wanted to give some insight on the face palettes also. Um, I want to talk more about the Too Faced collection coming up, by the way. I've had questions about their holiday sets, and I've been wearing them sporadically throughout my whole like kind of testing phase here. In fact, I've got one of the eye palettes on right now. So that review is coming. Thank you again so much for your time and I will see you very soon. Bye.